it may be a bit of a shock to you to see me talking about digestion when my specialty is normally gynaecology. And there's really two reasons for that. And one of them is a conversation that Michelle and I had at the end of last year, where we were talking about functional gut disturbance and the fact that when you talk to natural therapists about it, they don't really know what you're talking about in the main. And if you ask them what they learn in their colleges, it's mostly the weed, seed and feed idea. And if you look at our publications that come out from the various companies, there's a lot of stuff about parasites. And so what the message tends to be, and I certainly know this from my practice because I get lots of patients who've been to other practitioners and have come to me, is that patients are being treated with lots of probiotics, lots of medications to deal with parasites, and nobody's really looking at the functional disturbance of the gut. So Michelle said, well, why don't we do a talk about it? And foolishly, I agreed, so here I am. The other reason that I became involved in this or became interested started a long time ago, probably in about the mid 80s, when I was still a bit wet behind the ears. I'd only been practicing for about 10 years and I still didn't really know what I was doing or what my role was going to be in this profession. And um, I started getting a whole lot of referrals from a professor of gastroenterology. And sometimes they'd come with letters and sometimes they'd just turn up. And the first one was a guy who came and he had irritable bowel. And I thought, oh, well, this is fairly easy. But then they, these patients became more and more and more complex. And finally, I got a woman who was in her mid-60s. And taking her history was like writing down the, you know, the, the adverse effects that can occur in the gastrointestinal tract, starting from the mouth right through to the anus. And so I was thinking, my God, and I've got no idea why he sent her to me, because I don't know what's wrong with her. So I rang him up and said, you know, I'm kind of across the idea that she might have irritable bowel, but I don't really know what's going on. What's your opinion about the upper GIT? And he said something to me then that was really kind of important to me moving forward with these um, conditions and that is that functional gut disturbance, as I understood it then, now this is the 80s and people really hadn't defined a lot and, uh, about what functional disturbance was. And at that time it was really hard to find literature on these types of conditions. But he said, always remember Ruth, functional gut disturbance starts at the mouth and ends at the anus and it can affect any gastrointestinal organ anywhere in between. If you now read the Rome 3 criteria, and uh, if you look at page 29 of your notes, I've put in the sort of expanded version of that, all of the different types of um, functional GIT disorders. There's many, many of them, and they can affect the gallbladder, the anus, the, you know, the stomach, the esophagus, all the way through. The other thing he said to me that was really important was, uh, you guys have got all the answers. According to the research, there's really nothing that works in medicine. You know, we're too um, narrow in our target. The things that seem to work, and this was in the mid 80s, he was saying this, seems to only be herbs. And we've come to understand that in a lot of chronic disease, that you really do want to be starting to look at the things that we use that are multi-target, and the sorts of approaches that we use that are multi-target. So that holistic approach to medicine. 